Uh, well, she was supposed to be safe before. We thought it's safe areas, but uh, it looks like there's no safe zone in that you know in Syria right now. Uh, yesterday she was texting me that she, there's a lot of noises and shelling around, and the house is shaking and all like most of the group is on the floor just like you know waiting, and she actually sent me text messages like it's almost. Like just in case I'm saying goodbye, just in case something happened. And then there was no internet at all. So my, I was scared a little bit, but then I thought maybe the electricity went down because when the electricity go down, there's no fiber anymore or no uh, internet connection. Well, today they went to another city and she just when she texted me, she said it's very bad. She said we are in the middle of um, fighting, you know, and the fighting zone and she said we went up like I think she's in a building or something in the office that's how she was able to get the internet because it's not available so she said we went up the roof and we, I, she said I almost died and uh, because I asked her can you take a picture and send us she said when I went up do you want me to do she said because she went up there she said I almost died so we had to go down and uh, you know uh, the people who are protecting us refused to let us go out again. And she said, when I look out, out the window, I see missiles and I see fire and I see black chaos and a lot of smoke. Mm. Yes, those groups are youth and what they did, like they gathered money, they gathered, fun, uh, what do you call it, they fundraised uh, with the help of organization here. It's called Syrian Sunrise Foundation, SSF and those and also with the syrian american council so this youth group belong to like the syrian american council it's a political organization based here and the syrian Survive foundation it's a humanitarian organization uh, just born to you know get help and you know send it to the people who needs uh, mostly orphans and women like you know they've been affected by what's going on so those youth they did uh, you know, fundraised about hundred thousand dollars through the organization. There are about like sixteen of them, and from different states. And they went and they were delivering like you know food baskets, rice and sugar and oil and beans, for you know for families. Uh, we went in December. We stayed there until the end of January. It's about four days. Mm -hmm. um, we were trying to go for a while. Me and my sister were trying to plan a trip for. A about a year and we finally had the opportunity to go. Um, we distributed blankets, shoes, um, boots. When we went there we saw the we saw it like it was raining, it was really muddy, it was really cold, it was freezing, and we noticed that the kids were all wearing like sandals in the mud. So we bought them boots. We got blankets, um, jackets, and jackets, and food, you know, basic necessities, just to survive through the winter. To happen that the world community to acknowledge the atrocity and what's happening there. Usually wars are ugly, and they have very bloody and any human picture to them but oh, I think she's here mm -hmm. but uh, this war what we are see this war we are witnessing usually you hear about war we hear about somebody getting killed we hear about women getting raped but this time we are seeing these pictures and the world is not moving yet the Syrian people especially especially the youth they were looking you know f you know to to be part of the world like to be part of the like to the free world that they make their own choices in electing the people who govern them, the way they live, the way they think, the way what kind of government they have, what kind of schools they have. And that's promoted I think all over the Middle East, but especially in Syria, made you know, pushed people to start uh, you know start the revolution. <laughs> so it's not anymore human rights come first. It's not anymore the woman that she's carrying the child. It's not anymore that ch protecting children. Now it is, if we want to see it, we'll go prosecute it. And if we want to just cover our eyes, we'll do that. 
So I think what happened, what should happen, just the world to move on and help the humanity over there.